Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Delmarva, it's an opening day decision as we're side by side with deer hunters for the Maryland muzzleloader season. See what happens when you've got your choice of whitetails. Then, it's an island retreat that many Eastern Shore natives don't even know about. Hop a ride in Chopper 16 for a tour of Jane's Island. And his passion for peregrines has him going to new heights. Meet the falconer whose Ocean City stay is anything but a vacation. Plus, viewer photos, and we'll draw a winner for our latest giveaway right now on Outdoors Del Marva. Hi everybody and thanks again for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. And I'm Captain Willie Dykes and we're happy you could join us. You know, as we get the show started this week, I'd like to mention something really exciting, Mike. You know, for weeks, we have been sharing the work of photographer Kevin Fleming on the show. And if you've enjoyed his photographs as much as we have, you're going to want to stick around. As coming up in just a little while, we are going to pick a winner for an autographed copy of his newest book, Wild Del Marva. You won't want to miss it. Yeah, I can tell you that much from experience here just over the past couple of weeks paging through this. Really some magnificent artwork, and whoever gets this is going to be pretty lucky. You know what? We're lucky to live where we do because right around now those fall colors are really starting to peak. Yeah. You know, though, that cold weather out there definitely has the attention of deer hunters. You know what I'm talking about, Willie. Things are starting to get, as they say, a little bit ruddy out there. Yep. And you know what I mean. If you suspect there's a big buck out there somewhere, but you haven't quite laid eyes on him yet, you know that any time now something could happen. So when I spent an evening with some Maryland muzzleloader hunters recently, we were hoping for some opening day magic. It was the first time I'd met, let alone hunted alongside Ricky Hammond, but I could tell pretty quick he was a good guy to know. Yeah, we're coming back to a couple permanent stands uh, on a good location where we've had a, a food plots and we've got a, a lot of deer coming in out of here, so. Fact is, we weren't here on this farm near Willard's for either one of us, really. Ricky was the guide. Let's, let's roll. And I was doing the camera work as we set out to find a quality deer for our fellow hunter, Randy Beers. And to reiterate, finding the deer wasn't the issue. As we pulled up to our stand, we have to practically chase a group of does away. Because here, finding actually means choosing the best deer and then taking the best possible shot. I like to have something over 100 pounds. Prefer with big horns, but I'll take a big doe. Randy himself is a longtime hunter, but it's his first time with a black powder rifle. This 50 caliber Savage is pretty user friendly, and between its mounted scope, some binoculars, and a high powered spotting scope inside the stand, we should have no trouble identifying deer from any distance or direction, including the first deer to emerge from the woods in front of us. Among them, a small spike buck. We're just milling around, just eating a little bit of grass, and I guess there's corn there too. Like there's not a care in the world. He doesn't even know we're here. And within the first hour, we've already counted 11 different deer, at least two big does among them, but still no sizable bucks. That landowner just texted me. He's hunting a couple, 300 yards away. He said a nice shooter buck was heading this way. I said, we're just going to hope he pops his head out here so we can take a good look at him. But as the evening wears on, we just can't seem to find antlers anywhere. And as the sun gets lower, some of the lingering deer get even closer. And the decision is made to single out the biggest doe left, now standing dead ahead in the field. Well, it couldn't have worked out any better. Just when we thought we were going to take a you know, decent shot at one over here on the right side, we got the perfect shot. The biggest doe we've been seeing all night kind of gandered out right into the middle of the field. Yeah, that's a pig there. That 120? Yeah, that's, that's a nice doe. 
Randy took a nice shot on her. Looks like he hit her right in the shoulder. Took a big jump into the woods. We're gonna let her go here for a while. We're gonna head out and find her. Are you know her? No, I'm just gonna reload just in case she's suffering. Yeah. As we just wait on the go, Ricky packs the muzzle loader with another shot just in case. As Randy discovers a surprise. Let's see that. <laughs> And while his shot looked like that of an old pro, uh, he's paying for it with a rookie mistake. When he realizes the gun's scope, it struck him right in the middle of the forehead. But no worse for the wear, we're now headed out into the field where we quickly find a blood trail leading into the woods. And it's a sure thing. As we follow the path through some thick underbrush and briars, we don't have to go far to locate this mature doe just 30 yards in. I didn't think it was too far back. Good job, buddy. Yep, thank you, thank Good you. Job. Thank you very much. And as we drag this quality dough from the woods back to the truck, it's been a quality evening hunt. The perfect plan and the right decision. Hard to beat on opening day. Good day. Good day hunting. So while we never saw that big buck we were hoping for, I think Randy was pretty happy with the decision to take that big doe there at the end of the evening. Not a bad shot for a first time black powder hunter either. And I have a feeling we'll be seeing him out there in the future. Still ahead on Outdoors Del Marva, Captain Willie takes us aboard Chopper 16. We'll check out the island retreat that some Eastern Shore natives don't even know about. And later, between buildings and on rooftops, this falconer has his work cut out for him as he tries catching a dream. But first, did you know what three ingredients are combined to make traditional black gunpowder? The answer when we come back. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Frostrom Subaru, Lewis Harbor Marina, and Diamond State Pole Buildings. Outdoors Domarva will be right back. Did you know? The three ingredients combined to make traditional black gunpowder are sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. You remember that daydream that you have where you're in a place where there's a deserted stretch of beach, there's no sign of human habitation, and there's nothing around you but the sights and the smells and the feel of pure nature. Well, that's not a daydream. That's Jane's Island. Jane's Island State Park is located on the Tangier Sound near Crisfield in Somerset County. The island itself is 2,900 acres of salt marsh habitat, with over 30 miles of canoe and kayak trails through a labyrinth of creeks and streams. The trails are well marked, and they're protected from the waves of the open bay. They take you into a world that belongs to the bald eagle, who are attracted by the bounty of life in the creeks and ponds and find it a great place to raise youngsters like this adolescent learning to hunt the winding streams. You're at arm's length from a host of wildlife and waterfowl throughout the island. But it's the five miles or so of isolated, pristine beaches that make Jane's Island unique. They can only be reached by water. Boaters can approach from the bayside or tie up at a dock built where Ward Creek nearly meets the sand. From there you can wander for miles and if you don't mind wading a shallow stream, you can explore the remains of a seafood processing operation from out of the past. For a real wilderness experience, there are three backcountry campsites on the island, like this one at the southern tip of the park. The mainland portion of the park, across the canal and under the trees, has a hundred campsites, half of which have electrical hookups for campers. There are also five camper cabins, four full-service cabins, and a conference center that sleeps 16. The day use area is open all year with picnic facilities and a marina with a launching ramp. 
there are canoes and kayaks for rent here during the warm seasons. No matter how you like to experience the outdoors, they have pretty much all the bases covered here. As you can see, it's hard to believe you could get that far away from it all this close to home. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, the art of falconry dates back to ancient times. Meet the modern day falconer facing urban obstacles. Plus, we'll have another Scorchy's Corner classic. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. You know, with the late fall waterfowl season fast approaching just a couple of weeks away, it might surprise you to learn that ducks and geese aren't the only birds on some people's minds. And this week, we introduce you to a falconer who's come to Del Marva for a rare opportunity. Some people say falconry is like a virus, and when you get it, you know, it's hard to let go. It's, uh, some people say it's an addiction almost. Uh, so you get this, this, this uh, bug to get a bird and uh, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get it. But for Mike Dupuy, it's turning into an exhausting effort. The Falconer is one of just five individuals in the state of Maryland this year to be granted a permit to catch and keep a peregrine falcon. To be more specific, a tundra peregrine, just like the one we showed local researchers tagging and releasing in a story last week. And different from the falcon you see on Mike's hand, which is actually a hybrid, a mix between a peregrine and a jeer falcon. I hunt her and I fly her, and when I say hunt her, she hunts with me. Uh, I release her, uh, take this equipment off. She wears a hawk bell and a radio transmitter as well. She flies around and uh, I uh, basically will have a hunting dog, a pointer, that will flush game uh, and point game for me, or we can flush ducks off a pond and, and she'll dive down and, and try to grab them. But what Mike is really hunting is a fair chance. For the first time in decades, a limited number of falconers have been given the chance to take a wild peregrine as they migrate through Maryland. But unlike researchers, recreational falconers are not allowed to trap where most of the peregrines are, Assateague Island. This is my urban trapping environment. Instead, Mike has been setting up on rooftops of Ocean City hotels, one of the only places he can assemble a trap without constant interruption by curious bystanders. To be using a live bait, uh, much as a fisherman might put some live bait animal on uh, or fish at the end of his hook to catch a fish, uh, I have to use live bait to, to lure a hawk or a falcon in because they won't come to uh, carrion or dead meat. So. Um, uh, you know, I, I just think it could upset someone's sensibilities. Uh, it's not really an appropriate place to be trying to trap when you've got people walking around on a beach. For the opportunity just to capture a peregrine, Mike says he's been putting his best foot forward given the regulations, but hopes that in the future he and other falconers will be put on equal footing with others who seek this bird of prey. Take a look at those pigeons there and watch this. When they see that silhouette, <laughs> they move. Uh, because uh, this is uh, what they're afraid of. Well, unfortunately for Mike, the season for trapping a tundra peregrine ended unsuccessfully this year, but he vows to continue his work to reform falconry regulations on Assateague. Willie, we'll send it over to you. Thanks, Mike. You know, if falconry is a living art, then taxidermy must be the other kind. Back in 1988, Scorchy Taws visited a fellow in Wicomico County that turns trophy game and fish into trophy mounts. I don't consider myself a big taxidermist because uh, I quit once, but they won't let me, so uh, I went back at it again. So uh, why do you do it? Because I love it. 64-year-old Clint Scott of Willards began peddling in taxidermy in 1949. Got his coveted diploma in 1951, retired in 1982 for health reasons, then started anew in 1985. Because like he said, he loves it. I specialize mostly in big game and fish. So if fishing is good, I get quite a lot of fish. But deer heads is my big season during the fall or winter. Early spring, I start with fish again. And his favorite mounting fish? Bass. I like largemouth bass. He's a taxidermist dream fish. 
How do you rate Clint Scott as a taxidermist? Well, I don't know. I think I'll go with the best of them. In fish line and deer hits. Clint Scott is an avid outdoorsman. He is close to nature all year round, both in his favorite outdoor haunts and in the confines of his trailer workshop. And how does old Clint feel about the growing fad of having pets, such as dogs and cats, mounted when they pass away? Bury them. Don't bring them to me. Scorchy Toys, wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, a visit from photographer Kevin Fleming and a chance to win his new book. But first, did you know the word taxidermy is derived from the Greek words meaning arrangement of skin. Did You Know is brought to you by Taws Marine Insurance. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. And I'm Mike Parker. You know, Willie, in an area so vastly surrounded by water, it's really no surprise that a number of waterfowl species make Delmarva a pretty frequent pit stop on that annual migration. And one of those groups of birds that's hard to miss are the snow geese. Yeah. And photographer Kevin Fleming has this week's Wild Delmarva. Now that it's autumn, that means the snow geese are here again. They come from Canada's high Arctic where they breed in the summer and they winter here on Delmarva. Farmers hate them. Photographers love them, hunters love them. They make great subjects. Uh, they tend to rise like this photograph uh, before sunrise and you can catch the early dawn light against the clouds. It makes for some great color. This is a snow goose that had grabbed a mouthful of winter crest from a snow covered field in Sussex County. And of course there were other snow geese around that wanted that little bit of food because food's hard to come by when it snows here. So of course that goose took off with the, the winter crest in its mouth and went somewhere where there were no other snow geese so it could eat it. Here I was able to photograph these snow geese as they were coming right in, right next to me. They pitched into the wind, they slowed down. It's an easy time to catch them, see their faces, see the sunset light right on them, catch them as they're coming in. This photograph you can predict. If you photograph and watch snow geese, they always flap three times. When they're sitting on a pond or out in the field, they like to stretch their wings. I guarantee you, you see one flap once, there are two more flaps coming. You put your camera and lens on it and you've got two more shots at it. This would have to be the jigsaw puzzle from hell. It filled the frame with nothing but snow geese as they all took off. There probably had to be 10,000 snow geese in this one particular flock. It's a very tricky picture to get because you need to have the full moon rising and the sun setting at the same time so you only get one shot at that a month. If it's cloudy that month, you can't do that picture. Then, to get that right, you still have to find the snow geese, and they still have to take off all at the same time with the moon rising in the background. So I got one shot at this after many, many attempts. Snow geese are here on Delmarva from pretty much in September through March. Uh, great places to see them are Bombay Hook National Wildlife Refuge, Prime Hook National Wildlife Refuge, and Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge in Maryland. And right now, somebody out there watching is going to win a copy of this new book, Wild Delmarva, signed personally by Kevin Fleming himself. Willie, what do you say we go ahead and spin this barrel around? Stand by, Mike. And a one, and a two, and a... Well, that's pretty good. We'll dig in there deep. Got postcards all over the place. And here we have a postcard from Earl Harris from Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Congratulations, Earl. You got yourself a book. To order Kevin Fleming's new book, Wild Delmarva, go to wilddelmarva.com. One dollar from each book purchase is donated to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. To enter to win future product giveaways featured on Outdoors Delmarva, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Outdoors Delmarva, care of WBOC TV. 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. Stay with us. Your viewer photos are still to come. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Frostrum Subaru, Lewis Harbor Marina, and Diamond State Pole Buildings. It's 
time now to share some of the photos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Let's take a look. Yeah, this first picture comes courtesy of Tim and Mariana Breath from Preston, Maryland. They run the Strawberry Fields Farm in Caroline County. And Tim writes in an email, here's more proof the shore living is kind of laid back. Great picture. Here's a shot from Dan Bradford in Snow Hill, an old classmate of mine who says his granddaughters are ready to hunt. He also sent in this nice picture of a fox he saw while scouting for deer. And we can't forget the pups. Thanks to Paul Rose II from Pocomoke for sending in this beauty of a picture. That's his dog, Sophia, and a bunch of locally grown mums. Well, we love sharing your outdoor photos here on the show, and you can upload them directly to OutdoorsDelmarva.com using Flickr, or just email me at mparker at wboc.com. Well, we're just about out of time for this week, Wildy, but it sure has been fun. I mean, I love talking about deer hunting and getting ready for these late waterfowl seasons. Yeah, Mike, and you know, it's that time of year. We should see some of those big old trophy rockfish coming in, too. We want to wish all you anglers out there good luck. Absolutely. Well, that is it for this week. For Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker, reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. To enter to win future product giveaways featured on Outdoors Delmarva, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Outdoors Delmarva, care of WBOC TV, 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. And don't forget, photographer Kevin Fleming's new book, Wild Delmarva, is now on sale. To order your copy, go to wilddelmarva.com. And remember, a dollar from every book purchased will be donated to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation.